Yo, what's going on guys? It is FoxyDo98 here. Welcome back to a brand new episode of my F1 2019 career movie for you guys today here on the channel. Today we're here for another episode. We are here for the uh, French Grand Prix now. And uh, obviously, uh, if you guys haven't seen the previous episode, I recommend you go and check that one out before you come to this one. Um, but lo and behold, a bunch of my upgrades failed. So my ultimate chassis upgrade failed. My major engine upgrade failed. And then my two minor aero upgrades failed. Uh, uh, worked so they were on the car so out of the four upgrades uh, two of them failed and annoyingly the two that got on my car were the two little minor ones and then the ultimate and major upgrade that I was expecting to get uh, didn't come on the car so yeah really really frustrated about that but um, in towards qualifying then um, I had a bit of an issue and it was the AI's extremely overpowered pace in the final sector of the lap um, you saw it there I was four tenths down in the middle sector come to the end of the lap and I was 1.8 seconds off the pace uh, I just got through into Q2. I was 2.1 seconds off the pace mines compared to what Lewis Hamilton set. Um, and I was just confused right now. Um, I didn't quite understand where the lack of pace was really coming from. Um, well, I knew it was coming from. It was coming from the last sector. But I didn't understand how the airs were just so broken in th through that point of the lap. Um, into my uh, next lap now here in Q2. We're up towards the checkered flag now. And uh, we're just giving it everything we got to try and get through. Um, you can already see that we're slower than, than the likes of uh, Hamilton in front. Um, but uh, it was somehow P6 in, in Q2, and I was a little bit confused about this uh, and how I've managed to improve by so much. But in fairness, we were relatively standard for where we should be, 1.4 seconds off the pace this time, uh, and it got us through into Q3. So, uh, yeah, Mercedes, though, uh, way clear of everybody else, and he's six tenths faster than Charles Leclerc in that session. Vettel tried to get from medium tyres, and it didn't work out for him. It's only P11, so Vettel actually gets knocked out in Q2, which is a big shock there. Uh, both myself and Lando, though, both got comfortably through. Um, so no problems on that front. But yeah, a bit of a bit of a big one there to see Sebastian uh, out of contention. But like, he was the only one that tried it on mediums. Uh, now, in towards uh, Q3 then, so the check flag is out. And this is what I mean here. Look, right. I am now just two tenths, close to three tenths down in the middle sector uh, alone now against Lewis Hamilton. And uh, I carry on board for the rest of my lap. Now, in fairness, Charles Leclerc does go and set a much better lap. So he improves now to a 27.9. I don't actually know what Lewis Hamilton's fastest lap was at this point. I decided to go for the late apex in there, take a wide line to get the better exit on the on the car. Um, and that, for me, was my best line for that really difficult left-hander. Now coming towards the second-to-last corner here again, I take in a nice late apex and then open myself up for the run into the final corner. I thought that was a really decent final sector, but as I blast towards the start-finish line, um, it was like nearly 1.78 of the pace. Uh, and then across the line, it was the slowest lap time in Q3. So I don't even know, to be honest. Um, it was my best second sector I've probably done in the weekend. Um, I was one and a half seconds off the pace. The same as what it was in Q2. Maybe I was actually a tenth uh, uh, up in Q2, but I believe there was some faster lap times. Um, and yeah, somehow now all the way down in tenth after I was P6. So really didn't understand it. And I have a look here. So Charles, 24-3, 26-8, and a 36-7. For myself, though, going to that final sector, I did a 37-7. So I lost one second in the final sector, which I just don't understand. Um, but yeah, uh, it is what it is. Uh, we're going to start P10, not where I want to be starting. But this was my issue throughout the entire weekend, was just how stupidly broken the AIs are in the final sector. Um, and unfortunately, this year, actually, on F1 2019... Uh, for me, is the worst game for AI performance. They're just so badly balanced. Um, but we just have to focus on on ourselves. It's going to be 10th place. What we're going to try and do, just trying to get some good points. So let's get into the race now for the French Grand Prix. Hello and welcome to the circuit Paul Ricard, current home of the French Grand Prix, an event dating all the way back to 1906. It's been held at many venues over the years, with famous moments from Dijon and Manicor, the feature of many a highlights reel. And let's hope we see more of those in the race today. Mastering a lap of Paul Ricard means getting to know 15 corners, 6 left and 9 right, for an overall lap distance of 3.6 miles. The two halves of the long Mistral Strait are separated by a heavy braking zone into a potential overtaking hotspot at the Chicane North. And watch out for the drivers running onto the distinctive coloured stripes, which are low in grip and highly abrasive. Alongside me once again for coverage of today's race, it's none other than the great Anthony Davidson. Let me ask you about Renault. They haven't had any retirements in the last five races. 
What do you think that says about the reliability of their car? It's a good statistic for sure, as it demonstrates not only mechanical reliability, but consistency from both drivers as well. These are two of the first boxes you have to tick for any successful season. Before we begin, let's take a quick look at the grid lineup for today's race. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, and Lewis Hamilton completes the front row. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Bottas, Verstappen, Pierre Gasly, and Sainz, Norris, Perez, Butler, and Thomas, Vettel, Rojan, Lance Stroll, and Faber, Hulkenberg, Albon, Kevin Magnussen, and George Russell, Raikkonen, and Antonio Giovinazzi starts from the back of the grid. And with preparations almost complete, let's head down to the track. So we're on the grid then now to start this Grand Prix. And as you can see, uh, we're going to start on the dry tyres, but eventually in the final little quarter of the race, it is going to start raining. Now, it's only one block, so it might not actually uh, force us to go on to Inters, but we'll see. But as you can see, then we're on the grid here to start the French Grand Prix. We've now got five red lights here for the start of this race. And it's lights out. We go here to start the French Grand Prix. Already, it's more exciting than the real-life Grand Prix, and we haven't even got off the start-finish line properly yet. Norris gets a good getaway here and tries to attack Pierre Gassi in the Red Bull as we now go in towards the first corner here, trying to navigate our way through nice and safely here. That Vettel right behind me as we now get a great run there on the Racing Point team, on my teammate, and also on the Renault car. They all compromised themselves really heavily going in towards here. In towards the chicane now. A little bit of a bump and barge fest with Sergio Perez as he now gets uh, stuck on the, with Lando Norris. But we do get through the pair of them, so that's three places made. So we're up into what should be seventh place now in this Grand Prix. Both the Red Bulls now have lost out to the Renault car of Carlos. Uh, so that's a really big shame for them. But I believe Verstappen now is in the slipstream of that Renault car. And there's a lot of people fighting for the back as well. Norris is trying to get, defend his position against Vettel, trying to defend it against Perez, and also Devon Balsack in the process there. But in towards the chicane we go. We've got a fantastic run here on Pierre Gasly in the other Red Bull car now. And uh, you can see that Verstappen, though, did get past uh, the Renault car. Vettel also got past uh, Balsack and also um, Perez there. Now he's going for it on my teammate here, but obviously we're focusing on ourselves here. And uh, as we fly through now in towards this final sector where I've been the weakest, Vettel makes yet another place in this Grand Prix. And now this is the second of the circuit while I have absolutely no quarters uh, versus the AIs. Like, I tr I can't do anything about it. So all I need to do is just stick with them. The power unit is extremely strong, so I just need to use that in my favor when it comes to this point. But we take that very late apex again that I like to do. It just oh, it just allows me to carry a little bit of extra speed in towards the final corner and then open it up and then on the power now to complete the first lap of the French Grand Prix. And as you can see, cross the line, we are five tenths of a second behind Gasly. Vettel three tenths behind me. Which is a bit worrying because he's on mediums, but he's probably not going to be in my race today. Uh, as we now go blasting down the uh, Mistral straight here in towards the chicane. We can carry a lot more speed in the chicane versus the air. As you can see it there, um, not the cleanest run through there. Probably lost myself a little bit of time. In fact, my exit wasn't that good either. And I was running with low uh, ERS to try and save some because this track is very, very well known for having a really difficult time with ERS saving. But unfortunately, Vettel just blasts past me going in towards uh, scene corner and now in towards Lebose. I can't even pronounce it properly, so I'm probably going to stop doing that. Um, but uh, yeah, Vessel just goes past, and like he's now onto the back of Gasly. Norris is now onto the back of me. So you can see, look, I'm trying to break later to just try and find that extra edge. But look how far this It's on traction. The ARs are so good on the traction for this final sector. I've got nothing. And again, I'm trying to take my lines here. Norris now has actually made contact with the side of my car. He tried to dive up the inside whilst I was taking my nice late apex there. Uh, and that's really put me off guard. And now I'm having to go defensive versus Lance. Lando Norris here on the back straight now. Vettel 1.1 clear as Norris now trying to go for a run as Vettel is also having a go on Gasly. Vettel makes his stick on Pierre. For us though, uh, we knock over the bollards and that one too because none of them are necessary. Uh, and we do manage to defend against Lando, but we're still having to use high ERS modes now as Perez now gets a good run versus Norris. But as we go through there, we're completely fine. On to lap three of the Grand Prix now. Uh, these soft tyres, yeah, they don't last very long. They last about like five laps or so. Um, but I need to just get out of all of the traffic. Um... For me, like, I just needed to focus on my own pace. And when I've got people trying to overtake me left, right, and center, it just sort of puts me off in a way. So I decided the best thing for me to do was to jump into the pits, get a fresh set of medium tires on, and just get into some clean air and just run a clean race. That's the only way I feel like I'm going to improve. The more I just stay where I was, the more I was just going to become under attack. Uh, with that as well, I'm just going to be wasting my ERS and I'm going to be wasting my fuel mixture. Um, and I don't really want to be doing that. I want to be keeping everything all intact. So... That was the best choice for me. 
We are stone dead last, and there's going to be a lot of people outside the top 10 that were on medium tires before, um, but that's not really my concern. As you can see here, we take that wide line again, but Sergio Perez tries to sneak it up the inside. He's running the soft tires at this stage of the race, so Sergio now has come in for a fresh set of softs, which is quite an interesting strategy call there. Um, and now on to the uh, lap 9 of the Grand Prix. Sainz rejoined just in front of us. He too is on soft tyres as well. So the split strategy going on in the pack here. But Sainz breezes past Giovinazzi. I tried to see if I could breeze past uh, Antonio and also Carlos. Um, but I actually didn't have enough. I didn't use my ERS really. Um, but I got a very, very nice move. Around the outside there is Jeff comes up with a strategy change to uh, make me stop one lap later than my um, original planned strategy. So maybe... I'm doing a really good job on my tyres, but I'm not really sure. But you can see as well, though, the rain has started to fall. And it's really early in this Grand Prix. It's only lap 10, and the rain is already falling in this French Grand Prix. So it might just be that we might have to make a surprise swap to intermediates. And if that is the case, everyone that's on soft tyres right now, as I completely screwed up that corner horribly there, um, everyone that's on soft tyres, Perez, Sainz, Gasly behind as well, um, are in the box seat here because you can see the rain settling on the screen now. Uh, we're now onto the back of George Russell here because um, Perez has breezed past him. We're now going to see if we can find a way past George here. Um, but I'm sort of just trying to settle him behind. Sort of had a look there. Didn't work out in my favor on that occasion. Then I drop the ERS down here. But I get compromised on the brakes and I go very wide. Can't even keep the car in control. And Gasly gets past me. And at this stage of the race frustration really home for us but now as you can see here uh, we've got the DRS on Russell we've also got it on Gazi as well we're going to break late in towards the first corner here there's it's a very wide line there and we go back up the inside of both George and also Pierre in the process there so that's a couple of places made for us but yeah like honestly like rule number one when it comes to racing in, in any form of racing games is keep you cool um, because if you don't uh, you'll continue to make more mistakes the frustration continues to just build and build and build uh, and then it'll just all eventually just implode. So, yeah, I was trying my hardest to just keep my cool because I was really frustrated in this Grand Prix. Um, but uh, on to lap 15 of the Grand Prix now. Uh, you can see here that Charles Leclerc is in front of us. He's already made a stop, actually. Um, but we're now coming very late call uh, for a stop. I saw that one of the Renault cars had just peeled into the pits, which was Sainz. Um, so I decided to follow him in, basically. Uh, and uh, go for another set of the medium tyres. Uh, the rain still falling, but it's not making an impact on the track. So it's dry tyres, best way to go. Uh, 1.9 second pit stop. So GG to the McLaren boys for a cracking stop there as Norris rejoins on hard tyres, Albon on medium tyres, the other Renault car of Perez on mediums as well, and we're down in 13th place. So um, yeah, not very good at all, but there's a lot of cars on the hard tyres, uh, and in these specific changeable conditions, this is not the tyre to be on. You really want to be on either the soft tyres or the medium tyres. And obviously in this stage, we're on mediums. And now we've got the two Haas cars here of K-Mag and Roman Grosjean to dispatch with now. And as we go open the DRS here, now Magnussen is going to have the run on Roman Grosjean. I'm now trying to have a look at uh, Kevin Magnussen sticking in his slipstream. Breeze past Roman Grosjean. And then we go right round the outside. Super late on the brakes there. That's a stunning double overtake to get past Magnussen and Grosjean in the space of one straight in chicane. And uh, that's back into P9 for us now. It's on to lap 19 of the Grand Prix. We caught up to my teammate Norris who's on the hard tyres here. Perez and Sainz, though, have been stuck behind Norris for a little while now, and that's put them under pressure here. We're now going to go for the overtake on Norris, but we've got rich mixture and also overtake enabled now. I sort of squeezed Norris ever so slightly. I'm trying to still slip through my Perez here. Jump into it. Go late on the brakes again. Super late this time. A little bit wide on the apex of the chicane there. Well, not really at all. I didn't really make the apex of the chicane. I sort of made my own chicane up there. But I got the job done on Sergio Perez. But Norris somehow got the job done on Sergio as well. I'm now trying to save some ERS. And Norris is going to come back up my inside here. And it's side by side for the two McLaren boys now. And Norris takes the position here. Got to be careful though that I don't go wide. Because every time I've gone wide through that corner there. I've had uh, I've had cars overtake me. The likes of Russell, Gasly, Vettel's probably overtake me through there. But fair play to Lando Norris. Um, he's on the same. He's on. He's going to the end of the Grand Prix. Um, so why not give it a fight? As I'm now trying to save up some ERS here. I've got to go back on the attack now against Lando. We've also got one of the racing point cars just up ahead there. If I believe it might be Mr. Bullsack Boy. Um, so we might have to pass him as well uh, very shortly. But as you can see, it's a fantastic exit off the last corner for ourselves. With the DRS now, going to go towards the inside line here. And re-overtake Lando Norris for the second time now. And uh, there we go, up the inside of Lando. And uh, we should be able to pull away from him now with his hard tyres. Uh, they should be able to give us a bit more grunt. And uh, that's exactly what it's going to do. Lap 20 of the Grand Prix now. We get another sensational exit here 
versus Mr. Ballsack Boy. Ballsack Boy actually has got DRS for some reason. Somehow he's close enough to science to get it. Um, so I've got to use a little bit extra mixture. But eventually uh, the brakes are my favorite thing in the, in the world. And I can get past that. Literally riding over the curb there now. As uh, Devon now is going to see if he can try and find a way through. Meanwhile, Perez and uh, also uh, Norris are fighting hard in the background there. Um, but as I fly through this section now, uh, we're comfortably clear of Devon Bullsack. Probably going to have to do some defending though on the Mistral straight here. Um, but luckily, we can get away with that. And on to the final lap of the Grand Prix then. It is Valtteri Bottas that's come home to win the French Grand Prix. Uh, for us though, we're going to come home and finish in P5 for today's Grand Prix. Uh, and also split the Renault cars. The Renault's doing a great job today. Wide in the last corner there. But as we now come towards the start finish line, a really frustrating Grand Prix with a decent result actually. We can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot. A well-earned victory for Mercedes. Okay, so there we go, guys. That's going to be it for this Grand Prix. So Bottas wins ahead of Vettel and Hamilton. Sainz beats Sergio Perez, who beats Lando Norris. So really, Mercedes split Ferrari. Charles Leclerc DNF. When did I didn't even realize Charles Leclerc DNF in this Grand Prix? Oh, okay. Um, so yeah, Mercedes split Ferrari. Uh, the McLarens and the Renaults, us two, us two teams, uh, we intertwined with each other. Championship standings-wise, Bottas leads the way by twenty uh, by two points over Lewis Hamilton. Twenty-four points further back is myself, um, as we now are beginning to drop away in the championship. In the constructors' fight, uh, Mercedes are way clear of everybody else, and uh, I believe we're going to get an interview with uh, Claire very, very shortly. Amazing performance out there. I'm sure you're pretty happy with that. Your team must be ecstatic with how you're performing. I mean, in theory, we've had loads of great races, but we've also been sticking well to our car performance. The weather was miserable today, but do you feel this was an advantage for you? Actually, it probably didn't work out of my favour. Appreciate your time. Yeah, so as she was pointing on there, I don't think the weather actually worked out in my favour because obviously this was after the patch had been released. Uh, and um, yeah, the AIs are much better in the wet. I reckon pre-patch, in that conditions, I probably would have been head of Carlos Sainz. Um, but it wasn't to be. But we beat all our team goals, got a really good amount of resource points. The only problem that I've got is I have to spend all those resource points fixing the components that didn't make it onto the car for this Grand Prix, which is really frustrating and it's set back my development. But we have got a contract negotiation to go through. Um, so the team was saying expected quality position fifth, uh, race position eighth, first driver, medium team goals. Um, so I decided to just try and be a little bit, well, harsher. So I went with the expected race position of seventh. I wanted some harder team goals. Uh, and I probably could have got level 3 on the pit stop, to be honest, but I didn't, so it is what it is. But guys, that's going to wrap it up for my F1 2019 career mode video here for the French Grand Prix. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed it. If you have, feel free to drop it a like and subscribe to the channel if you're new as well. Uh, but as you can see here, um, I had 1,900 resource points, and I've got to spend it all on fixing all the parts, which is just a frustrating thing. I could have had the parts on today and pushed forward with development. But I can't. So, uh, yeah, that is what it is. Um, but, yeah, I'll see you guys for the next one, which is the Austrian Grand Prix. So, take care, all. Peace.